Hi everybody, this is Stephanie from Residential Rabbit and Yarns, LLC, and this is part two. It's the spiral plying for the six ply uh, spiral ply art yarn. So this is the next part of the video. We have finished spinning a single. Now that single is on the bobbin. And while I'm doing this, I'm kind of looking at it and I have two choices here. One is I can take this entire bobbin off or the other choice is I can use a and I can put a new um, bobbin on it, which is what I'm going to do. And the next choice is uh, you can also use a ball winder if you only have one bobbin. So I have multiple bobbins in the Lazy Kate, so what you can see that I'm doing is I am switching out the bobbins. I'm putting a bobbin, an empty bobbin on the spinning wheel. And I put the full bobbin on a Lazy Kate. Now that bobbin has about one ounce of thick and thin spun um, yarn on it. And you can also see I have somebody who is really trying to help me with the spinning in the video, but uh, they, they don't know how to spin very well. But that's okay. So what we're doing is just getting that leader line on there, putting it all through, and we have to attach the single of the thick and thin yarn that we spun, plus you can see upwards on the left hand side of the screen next to me, not right now, there it is, that, oh, the spool of thread, here it is. This is the spool of thread, it's 220 yards. This is what, um, what I'm using to, to spiral apply this. So we take a piece of thread, we take the single, we take the leader line, and I just tie them completely all together there. I tie them all on, and then uh, with the lazy cape, I always, I typically always put the lazy cape on the floor to my right. I'm right-handed, and I've typically always done this. For me, this is something that I'm, I'm comfortable with. Oh, you can see it's, we've got a little bit of an issue here. I've just got to figure it out and adjust. My spinning wheel um, is, there's a lot of places you can adjust. There we go. It was rubbing too much, and I had to move it. So, in my right hand, I'm going to hold the thread. Right now it's not in my right hand. The actual bobbin thread is going to be in my right hand, but for now it's not. My left hand is just there. It's really just gently holding, watching, guiding the, uh, the spiral applied yarn go through. Now what you can see is there's thick and thin sections. It, when I was spinning the single of it, you might not have noticed how much of a difference there actually was. And again, this is a yarn that anyone from a beginner, a complete novice with spinning, to somebody who's experienced with spinning, this is a yarn that anybody can spin. It's not something that uh, requires a significant amount of um, control with your yarn, because if you really wanted to, uh, you can you know, you can spin your t spirals tighter, you can spin your tyro spirals looser, you can spin your yarn thicker, you can spin it thicker, uh, thinner. There's all sorts of things that you can do. So this is a very forgiving yarn for you, and it's a very, very fast spin. So this video ends up being somewhere around 16 minutes long, and we know to spin that first single, it took about 14 minutes and 45 seconds to spin that first single, and that includes the time that it took to separate my row legs, my fiber, into three separate one ounce piles. So um, for this, it just takes a little bit longer uh, to take care of the entire plying, uh, the spiral plying, and um, you know, completing this single of yarn, and that's okay. So I spin pretty fast, and the wheel that I'm spinning on is an Ashford Elizabeth Two. This is pretty important. There are a lot of different wheels out there, and different wheels are set up to spin different yarns. Just because there's a spinning wheel doesn't mean it can spin traditional yarn. Just because you have a spinning wheel doesn't mean it can spin art yarn. Different wheels 
are made for different things. And the Ashford Elizabeth II that I spin on really is not an art yarn wheel. So what you're watching is um, spiral plying a thick and thin yarn. You can see it's not super thick because there, this spinning wheel is only able to handle a certain amount of thickness and a certain amount of like bobbles and art yarn. It isn't set up to handle really dramatic bulky or super bulky art yarns. Um, what I mean by that is uh, the orifice. So where the yarn goes through that dark part that's, cl that's closest to um, my hand, that's called the orifice. You can see there's a hole that the yarn goes through. That can only fit a certain size yarn. And let's say you're spinning with big bobbles or beehives, whatever you want to call them, this spinning wheel is not really set up to spin that because it will get stuck. And then you have to stop what you're doing and you have to pull it through. So that's why um, this, particular, this particular, particular wheel is not really an art yarn wheel. It's a traditional yarn wheel. What else do I mean by that? Well, the bobbin itself is not a big bobbin. Bobbins can come in all sorts of different sizes and different spinning wheels have different size bobbins. This is not made to handle a large amount of bulky yarn. It can handle three ounces of traditionally spun yarn. That's just fine. The interesting part is by the time we get to the last video of making this yarn, you're going to be able to see what was actually quite a frustrating experience because the art yarn is very lofty. This yarn that we're spinning, when we end up getting the six ply um, yarn, the last plying of it, it turns into a very, very lofty yarn. There's a lot of air in between the yarn. That makes it really fluffy. That makes it very squishy but it doesn't make it squishy enough where it compacts down on the bobbin. So the, there is not enough space for the three ounces in between the bobbin and the rest of the wheel. So the hooks, they start getting, um, it starts rubbing, but you get to see that in the next couple of videos. And you can do it, you can force it, but it's just is something that really um, is pushing your wheel to the limit. But but again, just because this just because this wheel is not made to spin an art yarn doesn't mean it can't spin an art yarn. There's just different ways to go about it to make sure it happens. So we're spinning, we're plying along here, and of course, when we're plying, we ply in the opposite direction of when we spun the single. Well, what does that mean? Let's go over that again, right? You probably know what that means, but if you don't, don't worry, that's okay. When I'm spinning this yarn, I spin it in one direction. The wheel goes in one direction. So let's say the wheel goes clockwise. When I'm plying it, I'm gonna make, make my big old spinning wheel go in the opposite direction, counterclockwise, for example. And you can do it. You can do it either way. There's no. You can start out counterclockwise and then spin clockwise. Either way is just fine. There's no. Um, you don't necessarily. It, it doesn't necessarily make a huge difference, as long as you don't ply in the same direction that you spun it. So if you spun it clockwise, don't ply it clockwise. Why? Because what you're doing is you're actually adding even more twist to the yarn. And we do not want this to be an over-twisted yarn. That's not the goal here. We still want this to be a yarn that once we take it off, once it's complete, not this single, but once all six plies are complete, we really still want this to be a balanced yarn. We don't want this to be a yarn that starts twisting back on itself, has way too much energy, has way too much twist. That's not what we want. We want this yarn that sits nicely because we want whatever stitches we use we want them to be nice and straight. We don't want them to start um, moving on their own any sort of horizontal way. That's not what we want. So for me, when I hold that spool of thread, so first of all, when you get the spinner surprise box, if you decide to get it, at this spool of thread has enough 
thread on it for the entire project and then a little bit more left over typically so if you if you spin this yarn a little bit thicker than how I spun it here then obviously you're gonna have more thread left over if you decide to spin your thick and thin yarn a little bit thinner then you're gonna have a little bit less thread left over but if you spin this is the warning if you spin this yarn too thin you will not have enough thread left over so you don't want to spin this super super thin so as I'm plying this the thick and thin th sections of the single are actually spinning in the opposite direction so they're uh, they're unspinning a little bit they are untwisting a little bit that's okay because it adds a little bit of loftiness to the fiber and it gives you more of these more dramatic looks so right there in my hand there was a section that it was highly twisted part of the, the yarn so the thick and thin yarn what you'll notice is you might have more twist in the thin sections of your yarn. That's something to watch out for, for when you're plying. When you're plying and you have a section, a thin section that has a lot of twist and it's kind of twisted up on itself, what I use is I use my pointer finger and my thumb to kind of help pull that single, pull that twist out. That, that overly twisted part ends up taking more of the thread because I'm using that thread to help really twist, untwist that, that part of the over-twisted or really twisted single. Now what you might notice too is you might have some sections of the thick section. You might have it where, wow, it really doesn't take a lot of thread. So you might not have a lot of spiral in the thick sections. That's okay. You might even have some times where the thread is almost parallel to the thick section of the yarn. That's okay too. It's not ideal in this yarn, but it is okay because the way we're making this yarn, that's not gonna make a huge difference. It's not gonna be very noticeable because this is gonna end up being a six ply yarn. All of the plies of the yarn come together and everything really, really starts to blend together. It's a very, very forgiving yarn. So, ever so often you can see, just like this, I keep moving the um, yarn onto the next hook. And that is telling the yarn where I want it to be loaded on the bobbin. Some spinning wheels have uh, different ways. Some have pegs instead of hooks. Some have uh, what's like a sliding um, circle and you just, there's clamps and it clamps to a bar and the circle just slides and you just move it that way. So there's all sorts of different things. Now the cool thing about this is so far I haven't really had any of my yarn get stuck on the hooks or stuck in the orifice too bad yet. That's perfect. That's really what we'd like. So when we think about all of this and we think about what we're doing, one of the things I talked about in the first video is why do we do this? Well, first of all, there's something extremely rewarding in creating a beautiful piece of yarn. There's something rewarding in being able to physically see the yarn being made, to do something that people used to do because it was necessary. People used to do this because this is how you had, this is how you made clothes, this is how you made blankets, this is how you made your socks, this is how you made a hat, yarn for a hat, this is what you did. And we live in a world where so many of the things we buy have no, it has no meaning. Many of the things we buy, there's nothing. There's nothing to it. There's no significance to it. But when you sit down and when you spin and when you make yarn, there's a significance to it. Because you have touched every single piece of that yarn. And you have been responsible for making every single inch of that yarn. And you know that yarn. You sat with it. You know if you fought with the yarn. You know if you had a good time with the yarn. You know if you were relaxed with the yarn. You know if you were tense with the yarn. And in the end, no matter how much time it takes you to make the yarn, you have the yarn. And so, spinning this and creating this and creating a, a type of yarn I've never seen before in my entire life. I've never seen a six spiral ply yarn. Ever. This is the first time I've ever seen it. We're at the end and I just uh, rip off the, the end of the thread. I just tear off the end of the yarn. Then I tie them together. And I take it off. 
I leave it on the bobbin and I take it off. Now if you only have one bobbin you can use a center pull ball and wind these in the center pull balls but so you can reuse your bobbin. But I have quite a few bobbins and I'm going to fill these bobbins up. I'm going to, that lazy Kate right there can hold three bobbins. I'm going to have three bobbins of uh, single ply thread on there. So we put a new bobbin on. And then you know what that means. Then it's going to be time for us to spin another single. So that's what we're getting set up for. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to end up uh, spinning these, plying these. We're going to show you plying these together. But there's bonus footage of spinning if you are a, um, a member of the channel. Feel free to check out. There's going to be bonus footage of spinning this video with bonus conversation. Thank you guys for watching.